guys, Red here. Ano ba yun? Nagsishoot ako eh. Nagbablog ako eh. Kaya ka pa? Mm-hmm. Kayo, kamusta ang exam? Ayun, sobrang hirap. Ano ba nangyari? Pinagawa sa inyo ng perfume. Ang dami kasing pinapagawa. Exam lang eh. Pinapalipat din ako ng upuan. Oo, te. Di na kami magkatabi. Dito na nakakopya. True. Dahil stress ka, tignan mo na lang yung pamangkin ko. Ito ba? Ito ba? Ang cute si Chogchog! Ala! Ang cute, Rod! Kamukha mo! Xerox copy mo yan eh! O diba? Parang ano, babaeng ako. Ay, lalaking ako. Oo! O diba? Kaso sa manang ugali nitong batang ko. Ako, Diyos ko, nakakaka-stress. Bakit? Anong meron? One time kasi sabi ko, Chog, laro tayo ng bahay-bahay. Sabi niya, sige po. Tapos hindi ako kumuha ako ng ano. Yung gamit pang bahay-bahay. Unan, mga... Kobre kama, ayun. Gagawa ko ng parang tent. Paglabas ko, daradala ko sa akin. Sabi ko, ano yan? BAD! Gumano na siya. Sabi ko, di ba? Ang funny. Sabi niya, sabi ko, bakit ano? Bakit ka nakagayon sa alakdad? Baril ka, boom, boom, boom. Sabi ko, hala. Tapos doon ko na lang, makausap ko yung nanay niya, yung ate ko. Sabi niya, nanonood pa na ng dagpuginsyan tong batang to. Ayun. Oo, ganun talaga. Nagkulat ako sa sigaw mo. Oo, doon niya nakuha yung mga ganun-ganun sa palabas, baril-baril. Ganun talaga, kasi kapag nakakanood yung mga bata, pag mga pelikula, TV, ganyan, ginagaya nila. Ganun talaga ngayon. Kaya dapat pagsabihan yung mga bata. Oo, oo. pagsabihan mo yung pamangkin mo, si Chum Chum. Kaya dapat lagi yung, may, yung mga bata na nanonood, mayroon din kasamang matanda talaga. What's up, family? I'm Kat. I'm Wayne. And I'm Ikoy. Isa na namang panibagong araw, family, at kaya panibagong topic tungkol sa media information literacy ang ating pag-uusapan. Yes, tama ka dyan, Kat. And before we start today's episode, let's have a short recap kung ano ba nangyari last time. Understanding news, media, and information ethics. Sigurado ako na lahat tayo, we have been in a certain situation na hindi natin alam kung tama pa ba yung nababasa natin online. Tingnan nyo. Philippines? Province of China? Ay, ang daming nag-comment, ang daming nag-like. Ang daming na rin nag-like, Shay. Ay, nako, basta ako hindi ako naniniwala. Isa lang yan, o. Isa website lang yan, o. Basta kami ni Ella, isi-share na namin para ma-inform na. Share ko na, send ko na sa iyo. So, guys, hindi naman po rikit maraming likes, maraming shares, maraming comments. Eh, legit na. Ano ba naman kayo? Tingnan nyo to. Basahin nyo to. Minasearch ako. O, basahin mo, basa. Philippines, a province of China, not now, not ever. So, if you're just going to say your opinion, it's very personal. It's not objective. So having source, having a credible source will help you to be able to be credible enough. And for today's episode, we will be talking about the representation of media and information. Sobra interesting ng topic natin. Kasi nowadays, we live in a world where media presence is everywhere, yes. di ba? And because it's lit to be literate, we will be answering some questions from our families. At syempre, magkakaroon din tayo ng mga guest experts to further enlighten us regarding today's topic. She is a graduate of Broadcast Communication at UP College of Mass Communication and has an expertise in the tri-media platform as the current editor and writer of goodnewsfilipinas.com, TV manager of Del SUD's Animo Channel, and the station manager of Del SUD's 95.9 Green FM. She is Miss Angie Quadra Balibay. Kaya wag na natin patagalin pa. You're watching... Am I Literate? In the old days, it's essential in terms of voice acting for drama, for example, for radio, and even representation for drama and in television and film. Because we need to assign roles. This is the mother, therefore babae, this is the father, therefore lalaki, and these are the children. If you have an aunt, a, a grandmother, a grandfather, there's roles. You're either male or female, you're Adam or Eve. Because it allows for a lot of societal values to be strengthened. Family values and strength in institutions, there's a family, blah, blah, blah. And institutions like the church, institutions like uh, communities, 
realizing that to keep order, there should be a man and a woman and children and whatever their genders are. But in the new uh, setup right now where the world is more, how should I say it? more liberal or more welcoming of all gender preferences i would say that gender stereotyping has no place any actual any stereotyping would have no place in real human storytelling because the reality of gender preferences and the reality of how people interact with each other the reality even of the kind of families that exist right now it, it's all it has all changed and um, to be able to tell the real story in a more complete, accurate picture, you have to recognize that there are different sets. There are different qualities. There are different descriptions already. But the formula for film and dramas, I think, um, has remained the same because dramatic and literary writing for media, you know, they need a handle. They need that. But they're opening more and more to the realities that there are, you know, different kinds of families and different kinds of genders, therefore. And we're seeing it right now. The thing is, mainstream media is a little bit timid in bringing it on, in acknowledging this. There's a lot of conservatism going around. Captains of the industry saying, we, we don't want this. Don't acknowledge it. Captains of institutions like churches and politics will say, no, no, no. And it will remain like a timid process until such a time when the entire generation of the leaders of the sectors and the industries are this generation that actually welcomes non-stereotypes. And when that happens, you'll see a whole new set of formulas for all media. What is the role of media to gender sensitiveness? The role of media in gender sensitivity is supposed to be is to, well, media is there to educate, inform, entertain, and educate, inform, and entertain in a responsible way. So if society says we need gender sensitivity, we need to be able to put down path that this is the wrong way to treat women, children, men, LGBT, plus, 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 then media should take heed and actually adopt it in their programming, in their material, in their content. It's really just the way to go because media is there to be responsible in capturing what's going on in society and what's uh, where society is headed. So it cannot ignore it. How does television and film affect the society? Art imitates life, life imitates art. I think it goes both ways. If you have um, geniuses who are able to come up with material and scripts and, and literary works that you can actually look forward and be daring and go beyond what is stereotypical now and what's uh, in the box right now, then you will hope that these kinds of um, innovation and innovative creative thinking with society will follow. It's like an advocacy. If you find geniuses who can advocate clearly and can actually be come, come up with media material that are biteable and consumable, then they will be advocates of where society can go. On the other hand, um, media because media can uh, ignore realities of society. If the society is moving on this way to the right, then media will have to follow and capture it. I think it goes both ways. Art imitates life, life imitates art, and advocacy in media is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. How do movies and TVs influence behaviors? I don't know if you remember this, but there was a, a, a story of when the Fernando Poe Jr. was still alive. People in Mindanao watching the cinemas will shoot, take out their guns, and shoot at the cinema alone because FPJ was being beaten, being shot at, and they will actually reply. Whether it's a legend or not, it actually gives you an idea that people, when they see film, they think it's true. And I remember this show by Ami Perez, the Bangayan debate about you know personal relationships and family relationships. 
and and people started saying, oh, tignan mo, tignan mo, dahil ikaw ay ganyan exactly sinabi mo sa akin, siguro nag ikaw rin at sinungaling, siguro ikaw din ang mababae. And, and people were, couldn't, you know, delineate between what's TV, what's film, and what's true. So media literacy is where we should all uh, focus. People should realize this is just TV. They may be imitating life, but it's not your life. This is just film. It may be, you know, feeling like it's your situation, but it's not your situation. Your situation is unique. Every person in the audience, their situation is unique. The factors affecting their lives and what's there and what's not there is unique. And therefore, what's on TV is an amalgamation of what's probably the experience of this generation and on film also. So people must realize with media literacy that this is just film, this is radio, this is TV, this is the internet. Your life is a whole different thing. And that should be the goal of media literacy. What does digital editing represent in the society? Digital editing, when you edit something, you're, you're taking a splice of reality and trying to put your twist into it or you know put together something. In news, it's... Uh, News copy editing is fine because you edit it for broadcast style or print style. But when you say you edit, uh, you do digital editing for, um, for example, you cover someone's speech, a press conference, an interview, like what you will do with me. You edit me, you edit the material, and you put uh, one and three together and take out two. Without proper care, you will be taking the person out of context. That is the danger of digital editing. You can easily take people out of context. You can easily um, quiet one reality and push forward a different reality. Yeah. And uh, well, digital, digital editing is a wonderful thing because we're able to give our story in shorter packages. If we're given just one minute, oh, digital editing thing. Panon ko linear editing pa kami. Grabe, physically I splice the tape the RB3 reel and then put an audio material next to each other and put another tape on it, physical. For And then it became uh, umatic editing, still linear, but we stop here, edit here, stop here, edit here, put it together. But with digital editing, it's also flawless. Even for music, the editing and the recording of uh, editing of recorded music, it's so flawless. Na? It's cleaner, but then if the person who's doing it is not responsible, then you might take care, might be putting someone a reality out of context. And that's something that, need, that people need to realize. Even if you're a media content producer or someone who consumes, you must realize when somebody something is edited and think of what was taken out, what was put away, what was shadowed, so you can actually understand and appreciate, wow, this is just their version of the story. Kaya nga guys, kung totoo si, hindi lang naman katulad ni Chugchug at saka yung mga ibang bata ang pwedeng maimpluwensyahan. Kahit yung matatanda, pwede rin silang maimpluwensyahan mga napapanood nila sa social media at saka sa television. Wow, oh, television. Television talaga. Ang buwas siya. Pero tama nga, ako para sa akin, dapat mas pinagtutuo ng pansin talaga ngayon yung paggabay sa mga tao regardless their age. True, totoo yan. Tsaka tayo, di ba, mga te, mga exposed na tayo sa mga bagay-bagay like sa social media, di ba, sa television. So, dapat pag may napapanood tayo, dapat iniintindi muna natin, di ba? Naku! Mari, gutom ako. Nagutom talaga ako sa exam eh. Ay, nakaka-stress kasi talaga. Tara na. Tara kain tayo. Diyan lang sa chocolate. Alam nyo guys, it's lit to be literate talaga. Tama, at ang dami kong natutunan sa ating episode ngayong araw. That's right, Weng, and we hope that you guys learned a lot from today's topic as well. Kaya patuloy na sumubaybay para mas lalong malinawan tungkol sa konsepto ng MIL. Again, I'm Weng. I'm Kat. And I'm Ikoy. And this is... Am I Literate?